Okay, now to talk more about the future of generative AI, I'm joined by Ray Wong. He's the founder and CEO of Constellation Research. Uh, I like the sphere behind you there as well, Ray. Good stuff, good stuff. Thank you. Thank you. I can tell you're in Vegas. Okay, I want to kind of, um, it's, it's refreshing, I think, for lack of a better term, to hear Altman talk about this. I'm curious about what you think his reaction to AI is, his plans for it. And, you know, he talks about uh, he's concerned about the speed and magnitude. Well, well, welcome to the party, pal. I mean, everybody's been concerned about that since they first heard about this. Well, he's part of the reason of the speed and magnitude, and that's why some of these safety checks haven't been out there, because the, him and Microsoft partnered out to get AI out early, uh, and a lot of people have been jumping on that bandwagon. But there is a lot of work that's really required, right? We need a couple ethical principles to be out there. I was working with someone named Dr. David Bray, and uh, sometime back we published a paper in MIT Sloan Management Review to basically talk about some of the people-centered ethical considerations. Algorithms need to be transparent. People have to understand why these things are happening. You also have to be able to explain how you Make decisions. Bias isn't a bad thing, but unwanted bias is. And so how do you address unwanted bias? And if you pick up something and learn it improperly, how do you unlearn that information? And of course, you want to be able to train these systems so that they're at a level of accuracy that you're comfortable with. And of course, over time, you want to make sure there's a human in the loop, because if you don't have a human to start the process or end the process, things could go wrong. Now, that's just AI working in action. That's not misinformation or disinformation. Right. There are other aspects that we have to think about. And the leaders of the two largest economies on Earth both say, look, we need to move very slowly, very carefully, uh, uh, moving forward uh, with AI. So which countries, which companies are stepping up investment right now? We're seeing a lot of investment. We see it, of course, on the chip side. Every chip manufacturer is trying to figure out how to compete in this market. We've got new entrants like Google, of course, that has a TPU chip. Amazon has chips in the past. Um, and then, of course, everybody's trying to go after this market. Apple's had chips as well. Uh, you saw it with their announcement this morning about M4 as well, building that AI. We also have companies. I'm here at the ServiceNow conference, and they're embedding AI into their platforms. We see other companies like Adobe and Oracle and Salesforce that have been actively enabling AI into these. So we're happening at the application level. And of course, we're seeing it in all the cloud vendors. They're natural places for it because they've got lots of data, they've got lots of compute power, and a lot of people are building things on top of them. So Amazon and Google yeah. and Microsoft all play a role there, and Alibaba, of course. Uh, Ray, talk about the latest drives being made by Chinese uh, cr creators out there. Yeah, I think a lot of Chinese creators are, are there trying to make sure that they also are in this game. Uh, and that and the overall drive in terms of creators is to make sure that their works are protected. Uh, anything generated in the future is, you know, a derivative. They get credit for some of that work. And a company that's done a wonderful job doing that actually is Adobe. Uh, yeah. They take their materials, stock, uh, which is, you know, basically art and artwork that is licensable. Um, if you build a derivative and enter into stock, uh, they set up systems for them to track the veracity of that information and when some content might be taken or the content authenticity behind that is not valid. And so I think those are initiatives that are there. And of course, there's some of the work that came out from a U.S. White House initiative right, to make right. sure that everybody had validation and verification of their information and content. Okay, Ray, bear, bear with me on this one. <laughs> hear me, hear, hear me out all the way. What are your thoughts on how AI is being used uh, in some ways to like communicate with the deceased. And what I'm talking about is people who could type in, say, what uh, Plato's teachings or uh, Aristotle, and then pose a question that way and have AI answer it. And also, of course, in music and film production as well. We're going to see a lot of that, that people might want to bring back someone to, you know, tell a story from the past. Uh, this is what perhaps Abraham Lincoln would have said. This was what Sun Yat-sen might have been like, right? This is what, you know, um, this is what evil rulers could have been like. Uh, this is what the, you know, uh, Genghis Khan could have been doing. Uh, and, and I think people are going to have fun with that. And it's really about historical accuracy. Can you capture the nuance? Can you capture that? Maybe you want a relative. You want to, like, maybe you and I will start recording ourselves now so that we can provide advice to generations after us, wow. right? So we're going to see a lot of that coming up as well. Okay, what about ways, um, kind of breakthroughs that we are seeing right now uh, that are going to be used moving forward? And, you know, do you have any concerns about this? Yeah, I think what's really important here is, you know, as many people noted, over more than half of the world is actually in the middle of an election cycle. Right. And, and that impact to geopolitics, the ability to avert a crisis, we really have to have the ability to identify that the person who sent that content is that individual, and of course, it is their content. 
And I think those are two things that have become very important. This has to happen not only in the public platform market, but it also has to happen in the private social networks where a lot of information is communicated, whether it's WeChat or Discord or any of these tools. A lot of organizations don't know if they're even trafficking in misinformation. Mm. Okay, let me pose a question to you because if that does happen, you know, there are elections all over the world. I, I'm, I'm, I'm drawing a blank on the number, but it's staggering how many there are uh, this year. But here in the U.S., a very closely watched one because it's clearly going to change the direction or keep the direction that the U.S. is going. If that happens here, uh, an AI, I don't want to say attack, but it is if it's used in a negative way, do you think there's going to be big pushback moving forward? I think there would be a big pushback for any country if they're experiencing that. We are in a massive misinformation war. The wars we're fighting today are not kinetic. They are very cyber. They're psyops, uh, and they're happening already. Uh, that's why you're seeing interest in different ways in terms of you know what what authenticity is happening. That's just the beginning. Uh, but people are worried that their open societies could be taken over by misinformation and disinformation. Okay, Ray Wong, always a pleasure, my friend. Enjoy Las Vegas, and I hope you get to see something in the sphere. That is an amazing sight. Hey, we'll check it out. <laughs> okay, thank you again.